Hello. Um, today I'm going to talk to you, as uh, he said, about Rails admin. Uh, but first, a little uh, about me. I'm a student from Romania. I'm a developer for Mongeotech. I've been a student in the Ruby Summer of Code of 2010. And um, the Rails admin is the project, is my project for the Ruby Summer of Code. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask at the end of my presentation. And you can find me, of course, on Twitter at, um, at Hurricane with an I. Um, so, uh, what is data administration? Every web developer, um, sometimes in the past, when he wrote the, his first web app, thought about um, how to do data administration, how to manage and control his data. So, um, data administration differs from web app to web app, but in, in the way you organize your data is, um, and you control the data is um, the way you do data administration. So you organize your data, um, that's the logic of your application, and the way you control it, that is the data administration. So um, usually you do this via an admin panel. So there are a lot of types of admin panels out there. Uh, you can do data administration in all sorts of ways. But how to do it in a secure and uh, a fast way? Usually, uh, many people uh, write their own admin panels. So this is a little error prone because you have to test it very well. Uh, it's definitely not fast because you have to waste a lot of time. And uh, it's not always very, very simple. Um, other people use uh, CMSs, so um, this is usually fast. This is usually not fast uh, because you have to learn how the CMS works and everything. But it's usually secure, um, but it's not uh, and it's flexible somehow. Um, also, the Rails way of doing it is using a plugin, uh, or now in Rails three an engine. And um, this is uh, all of three. So it's secure because uh, you plug in, you plug the, you know the plugin that it's very well written or it has a lot of tests running on it. Um, so it's um, secure. It's fast because you just plug in the, the engine and it works. And it's also very, very simple. So introducing the Rails admin, uh, you can find the code on GitHub at uh, that address. Um, as I said, it's a Ruby Summer of Code 2010 project. Uh, my main mentor was Eric Michael Alberts, Albert. so um, it was a very, very nice collaboration between us. Also, a lot of uh, important people from the Ruby on Rails community um, contributed to, to, this, to this project as mentoring and everything, like Yehuda Katz and all the people mentioned. Um, the history of the Rails admin is that uh, Eric coded the Merb admin, that is a port of uh, the well-known Django admin, and I had to port the Merb admin to, to Rails 3. So um, the Rails admin is in fact a Rails engine. Um, that is a feature introduced in Rails 2 and um, continu continued to Rails 3. So you have um, basic Ruby on Rails application, and you can run that application uh, in um, a different uh, Ruby on Rails application, just um, structuring your code um, a little different. So you, have, uh, you keep your main logic with uh, controllers, models, and views, and you just uh, namespace your application, and uh, through, many, through magic, everything works. So it's, it's very, very simple to write an engine. Um, so this is a controller that is just namespace and it works. Also, um, <laughs> oh, you can do that with a module also. And um, that's the, the basic of, of Rails engines. Also, uh, the routes, that is a pretty important thing in uh, Rails. You can also uh, do this. In your in your app, and uh, everything works out of magic. So it's it's very nice to write um, um, Rails uh, engine. 
So Rails admin uh, does uh, the CRUD thing very, very well. It does automatic form validation. Um, of course, you want to have your data um, protected by some sort of authentication. So we, we use device. You can do column search, history. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty uh, full option admin panel. Um, so how do you install it? You just write in your gem file two lines of code. You run a bundle update. And um, after, uh, after that, you just uh, another line of uh, generators. And that's it. Your admin is plugged into your Rails app. Also, uh, an important feature that is going to be um, available in, in Rails 3.1 is uh, mountable apps. So I have uh, my Rails engine that is not installed via Gem, and uh, I only say mount an application, and it all works. OK, so I'm going to do a short demo to show you how um, the, the Rails admin works. OK, so this is my typical web, uh, sorry, web application. And I have put the, ah, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if it's, it's very nice to see, but. OK. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. And if we do, I'll. Okay, perfect. So uh, you just put these two lines of code, and everything works. And you run the, the basic um, installation. So you start the web server. And um, it works. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, sorry, that's ah. <laughs> there was there because um, it's a basic Rails application does not have the the basic path set out. So um, you run this. Uh, if you have a clean web application installed, you uh, have the Rails admin asks ask you for a username and password that is done via device. And um, this is how the admin panel looks like. I have a simple uh, post mo um, model, and uh, I can view multiple columns. I can edit um, different. Um, entry and can create a new one. Also, um, it maps validations. So you, if you have uh, one to many or many to many uh, um, associations, sorry, uh, does that. Uh, you can put in, um, let's say, we do a quick uh, model. Let's present uh, of a uh, title, I think. So I put a validation uh, there, and I hope that I. Okay. So if I do this, it says um, it could not update the post because it has a blank title. So this is the basic uh, Rails admin. Also, you can do searches. Um, you can, multi you can uh, select different um, entries to delete. And um, you have a history that is row-based. So every modification to your um, table is mapped to the history table. So this is the basics of uh, the Rails admin. Um, So we're going to launch the Rails Admin 1.0 in a few weeks. That's the main uh, milestone for the Rails Admin. But uh, if you pull the, the code from the Git repository, it's uh, production ready. We have a lot of tests written. So you can run those tests and see that everything passes. Um, 
Also, uh, since I've stopped working on um, on the Ruby Summer of Code in September, we had we have now um, 1,200 um, watchers on GitHub. It has been translated into 12 languages, and uh, configuration DSL has been written by the community. So a lot of people uh, contribute to our application, and um, this is a sample of the configuration DSL. If you want to hide a model in your application, you just do this, and um, the model disappears. Um, okay, so uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, there is a lot of debate on our issue tracker on GitHub because um, people don't want a Rails admin to use device um, because it, it's normal uh, in some way. Because, um, because there, every people, every web developer wants to write his own uh, authentication um, scheme. So it's not very, very uh, used device by the community. But um, we use it, and um, the project as the Rails admin has uh, starting to have a lot of users. Um, Permissions, we haven't set up um, some sort of permission framework for the application. So the user has just one super, the um, plugin has one super user that does everything. The configuration is being done through the DSL. Any questions? Please. Can you repeat the question, please? <laughs> uh, no. Okay, so uh, he asked that for the Rails 1.0, we support polymorphic associations. That's right? Okay, f um, for the moment, no. But um, if you really need the polymorphic associations, you're free to pull a request and get and do that yourself. And um, we have a lot of contributors that are going to accept your patch as quickly as we can. So um, we have now seven months since we started the project. We're pretty young, and we accept as many contributors as we can. Another question? No? OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>